So that should be good. Okay, so welcome everyone. I am so excited that we are doing this Zoom call with Sophia Hall, our featured artist of April. I'm gonna quickly introduce Sophia and then she's gonna take about herself and then do a beautiful poetry reading for us um, and show some of her paintings from last summer in X. Um, oh, so we are overjoyed to have Sophia Hall as our featured artist for April, 2023. Sophia is a high school senior and an accomplished poet and artist in DC. She is also the DC Youth Poet 23. She attended um, the Leo Marshit School in the summer of 2022 for our painting and program in Aix-en-Provence last summer. Sophia will be co-leading our half day workshop this coming Sunday at the National Gallery of Art. If any of you are there and interested in joining, um, Sophia has decided to attend the University of Pennsylvania next year. You'll see her sweatshirt on right now, um, showing a little school pride. <laughs> Plans to pursue creative writing at Penn. Um, we are just thrilled to feature Sophia and her work this month, especially because this month is National Poetry Month. So without further ado, I will pass it on over to Sophia to talk to all of you. Thank you so much, Rose, for that marvelous introduction. And yes, I'm wearing pen shirt right now. I, I'm on my lunch break from school, so I'm so glad I could zoom in and talk to you all. And I always say that pen is for writers. That's my little saying that I have. And my experience in X this past summer was completely transformational. I hadn't picked up a paintbrush and really sat down and took take the time to paint since like elementary school. So being an ex, painting in plain air and being surrounded and steeped in artistic history really inspired me and I think propelled me to create wonderful works of art. Um, and I'd like to share with you a short memoir piece that I wrote about one of my paintings and also share my screen so you can see my take on the Mont Saint Victoire. You can share the cat painting. Wow. Okay. So the, the story I'm about to share is called The Luminous Effect of the Whole, and it was inspired by this painting. Beautiful. The Luminous Effect of the Whole. I am lost in the overwhelming swath of landscape before me, the trees, the rushing volume of the Mont Saint Victoire the aching absence of sky, and the dramatic unity of nature. Then I see it right ahead of me, a spark of inspiration shimmering along the road, its tail flicking back and forth as it trots closer. A cat. Alan tells me her name is Capuchin. She belongs to the farmhouse I later bring up on my canvas with rosy yellow oil paint, the color of afternoon tea, the warmth of notes plucked on a double bass. Using the oval of my hands, I discover my motif, a narrow paved road leading up to the arcing bows of trees, fractures of the mountain in between branches. The attention-seeking cat finds a seat on the sketch pad, blocking my pencil from my paper. Even when I shoo her off, Capucine remains close, curled by my feet. Contours should be drawn, not in a continuing manner, but rather fragment by fragment, with a lightness of hand, that the object be not closed but open to the light, that it may breathe in the enveloping atmosphere. When I finish a rough sketch, I return back to the canvas. I make a decisive mark. Then I immediately doubt myself, and I swab a paper towel into turpentine and swipe off the paint. I could not commit to my artwork. Alan says, I don't feel your usual joy this morning. He snatches the brush from my hands and strikes the void of white with patches of green, the sharp swoops taking the character of umbrella pines. I'll take 10% of the royalties, he jokes, then leaves me alone to produce my own strokes of the motif. Slowly, concentric forms emerge with my brush, the thrum of newly hatched cigals, the passing cars that cheer for us artists, the fragments of the mountain. I let yellow leaves bounce off violet rock, red clay run into green boughs, and blue sky crunch up to orange trunks. I break each color with its complement, 
creating my own symphony in a world paralleling life. The light changes before me, shadows shortening. The placement of the shadows is very important. It is the placement of the shadows and their harmonious rapport upon which depends the luminous effect of the whole. Patches of white canvas remain uncovered in order to let the incandescent light shine through. I revel in each stroke, each concrete commitment to my art. I dip my brush into a red, blue, yellow tertiary that contains all the colors of the universe to render Capuchin, who now winds her body around both of my legs and the easels. I capture my first memory of her on the light streaked path, a beam of joy with perked ears. With a flourish of my brush, she breathes out of one world and into another. One must leave the paper the power to act by itself in order to give birth to the light. Thank you. So the luminous effect of the whole, that title was taken from Rembrandt's statement on drawing, which was also interspersed within that piece. So I don't know if it was familiar to any of you at all. <laughs> Beautiful, Sophia. Very familiar, I would say. <laughs> Lovely Rembrandt. And while I was also in X, one of the exercises we did was copying from the masters. And I was really struck by Cezanne's series of the bathers. And I created three different versions of his painting. And here are two of them. And I even wrote a poem about them. I was so inspired. The bathers. Tonight is the buck moon, but we are no longer worried about the shedding of antlers. Instead, we sit on the edge of a fountain with our feet rippling in stars, like the hunters of Artemis, our bodies crescent and notched and flung into the luminous void. We are Cezanne's bathers, without the artist's possession, no outside gaze inflicted, our nakedness entirely our own to cradle and to hold without apostrophe. I really, I really enjoyed painting this one. I feel like it took me three times just to get the light just right. So oh, lovely. Thank you, Sophia. Oh, Are we muted? No, you're not muted. <laughs> oh. Beautiful, Sophia. Thank you. Is that the, is that the second one? Where, which one is the other? Do you have the other one? This is the first one that I did. Hmm. And then this is the third one. So you can see a vast improvement. <laughs> so lovely. Goodness. And then I have another poem that I wrote about experiences in X that I'd like to share with you all. So I'll put up, which one should I do? Okay, this is a copy of uh, Van Gogh and it, it's a lot more watercolory than um, the original, but I had a lot of fun painting it. And here's a poem that I wrote about people that I met in X and some of the experiences I had. Excess sips Sauvignon Blanc as she renders the jazz quartet with pen onto a napkin to place in the tip jar in lieu of a 20. She bites into the entire world like cherry tomatoes from fresh market green cardboard, something to sink teeth into, pulp and all. She reads tarot cards. Death means transformation, but she never does transform. With her Canon camera, she captures church angels she nearly joined as a child. 
at caf cafes, she indulges in only one thing, un grenadine, s'il vous plaît. She also indulges in holding the handlebars of a motorcycle driving man's mustache that she hitched on the back with. She dyed her hair purple in a hotel bathroom and spray painted cowboy boots red. Her tongue curves a cherry stem into a knot, her life a party trick, voice curling out of the tinny speaker as she replays the studio recording. She sings, wild, there's nothing scarier than a girl who is free. And then I also want to go through just some of the different ways, different mountains that I captured in X. So this was, I think I did it on my last day up painting the Mont Saint Victoire. And I kind of think of it as a frog. <laughs> <laughs> I can see like the two black eyes here and just like the green. I thought the green would ground the painting down, but for some reason it just it takes on the form of this bulbous frog. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cute. And this is my favorite one that I ever did of the Mont Saint Victoire because I feel like the colors captured the vibrancy of the mountain and the contrast between the mountain and the sky is just beautiful in my opinion. And this painting, I called it power line because right here in the mountain, there was a power line. And I remember I was really struggling to paint it and put it in the painting in a way that wouldn't distract from the rest of nature. And then Alan was just like, you know what? You don't have to include it if you don't want to. And I was like, what? <laughs> revolutionary. And you think as a, as a poet and a writer, like I'd be okay with fictionalizing things, but that was a fun, a fun experiment and new way of thinking about painting. And this is a chateau that I painted on a lake. It was called the Lac de la Bonde, I think. Mm -hmm. And it feels like something out of a fairy tale. And I had a lot of fun with playing with different colors and making it seem more fantastical. So th that's my repertoire from my summer in X. I think I can open it up to questions now if you have any. Lovely, Sophia, thank you. So beautiful. Um, I have a quick question for you. What have you been writing lately or have you been too busy with the end of your school year? <laughs> no. You know, I've been, so with the end of the school year, you're right, it's been really busy, but I recently learned that each year I, I send in my writing and art to be judged at the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, and this year I learned that my senior writing portfolio won Silver Award with Distinction, which is an honor only one in 16 seniors receive each year. So I'm going to be receiving that award at Carnegie Hall in June. And I guess that really yeah. just propelled me and affirmed me as a writer and as an artist, because I'm a writer because I write and I'm an artist because I make art, but also it doesn't hurt that other people see my work and are, and enjoy it and think that it's worthy. So uh -huh. I think right now I'm just in a place of gratitude. And one of the poems that I've written recently is an ode to gratitude and it was also recently my mother's birthday she's an Aries baby so it just happened a couple weeks ago and I wrote a poem for her birthday oh that's so sweet and congratulations you've got all the ladies don't you <laughs> so tell me about this Carnegie Hall gig when when is that you go to New York in Carnegie Halls in New York, right? Yeah, so basically each year they have an award ceremony and I'll be presented with my medal on stage. So, and so It's in early June. Early June, is this a, a nationwide thing? Yeah, they received half a million entries this year and 
I was only one out of 16 writing portfolio silver award winners. So it's, they have an, an incredible volume of work that they receive and then less than 1% get aw awarded on the national level. Wow. wow. So you are poet laureate, laureate for Washington, what high school poet laureate for Washington DC now, is that? Yes. So I'm the DC Youth Poet Laureate and I was selected for 2023. And how I got this honor to serve as an ambassador of poetry and of DC was I submitted my sample of writing and that was graded out of a score of 300. And then I was chosen out of a pool. There were only three finalists chosen. And then I had an interview, which was really intense, that was also graded out of 300 points. And out of 300 possible points, my poetry scored 300. And then out of 300 possible points for the interview, I got like 282.5. I don't know how they got the 0.5, but I got the <laughs> highest score. And now I have the privilege and the honor of engaging with the community and promoting the power of literacy, of spreading joy of learning and love of language. And I'm, I, I can't believe that I have this position. I have the title and I'm able to really work in the community, teaching writing workshops, working with little kids at the libraries. It's amazing. Hmm. So what would your projection be for how many years it's going to take you to become Poet Laureate of the United States, would you say? <laughs> hmm. Ideally, you know, <laughs> it would happen in the next year or so, but I'm a writer. Oh, yeah. I'm a <laughs> well, actually, Ada Lamone, the current U.S. Poet Laureate, was just confirmed through 2025. So I, I guess Wait. I can't be Poet Laureate until 2026. Watch out for me. Okay, I'm... <laughs> I'm going to put money on you, that's for sure, to 2026. All right, that sounds good. Incredible. So tell me a little bit about the interview when you said it was really intense. How did, how did they ask you questions? What did they, how did they interview you? So I feel like it was a little bit like this. I was in a, it was a Zoom room and it was, well, here I have friends and Marshute's family, but there it was two people I had never met before. And they said, okay, Sophia, we have 20 questions um, and we're gonna ask them to you randomly. And I want you to give us an answer in two minutes or less. And so they would popcorn different questions and I would have to answer them rapid fire. And I, they didn't tell me the questions beforehand or what I needed to prepare for. So I guess I just had to rely on my entire life experience with poetry as an artist. And I had to, they asked me questions about what I would do with my position, how I would work with the community. They asked me a question, if you were in a room with 20 first graders right now, how would you teach them about poetry? And I was like, oh, wow, okay. I'd probably show them like Shel Silverstein and <laughs> some kid-friendly poetry that rhymes and gets them engaged and interested and then maybe introduce haikus about cherry blossoms and springtime and teach them the 575 form. So it was just a lot of like real world application questions that I felt like I've been, it wasn't something I could sit down and prepare for, it was something that I was preparing for my entire life. Good job. And so you're re you ready for the museum tour next in five days? Yes, I'm so excited. I've been working with Kathleen and my co-leaders, Amelia and Nick, to help brainstorm prompts and develop them and flesh them out so that when people come on the workshop and tour, we're going to be looking in depth at Cezanne's painting, Abandon the Road that people will have a really enriching experience looking at the painting, um, looking deep inside the painting, and then taking that outward reflection and turning it inward to write some memoir, to write some poetry, and then hopefully have a finished product that they're proud of. 
Show of hands, how many of the people here are from DC? Or where is everyone from, I guess, would be a better question. I'm from DC, I'm born and raised. So you can just type in the chat. Oh, or say it out loud. I, I'm from Virginia, but I live in Dallas now. Mm. Which I'm is there. Hi, Alan. <laughs> Hi, France. Yes, 12 years in France. <laughs> I went to the Marshute School for the first, uh, it was going to be a summer program, and I stayed uh, 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the record of a student no, thing, no, although no, actually no, Alan no. and John have the record beat, don't they? <laughs> yeah, I do. And, and, and Kathleen. <laughs> and Kathleen, of course. <laughs> I'm two hours away from Washington in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Mm. I'm not far away. Oh, Sam's joining. And I'm in Portland. You know that. <laughs> Closer to Washington State. Sad face. Let's see. Sam Bjorkland just joined. Minutes. You're in what you're in Florida, Sharon. Let's Oops. see. You're on mute, Sharon, here. Let me see if I can I can ask you to unmute and then it should. Uh, there you go. Yes, I live in Florida now. But I was uh, born in Georgia, grew up in Maryland, went to school in Virginia. So the wow. D I was in the D.C. area, kind of, and then lived in Southern California for a long time before moving to Florida. And I went to the Marshute School unexpectedly in 2013. I went back to school at the University of Mary Washington and won a scholarship to go to paint in France, and I chose Marshoots. Yes. And you're still in Italy time, aren't you, Sharon? A little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just, excuse yeah. me. Yes, a little bit. Wishing I was still there and figure, oh. to figure out how do I recalibrate now? Yeah. Uh, how did you come to be interested in writing and poetry? What, what galvanized you as, as a much younger child, I guess? Not that you're I think my proclivity for reading really helped me because I was I was always an avid reader. You couldn't catch me anywhere without a book. I would bring a book on the bus. I would bring a book to dinner time. You know, some kids nowadays are told like, hey, get off your phone or like put away your toys. My mom had to tell me, Sophia, put down the book. Like, put it away like you can't read while eating it's like I even tried to read while scootering once and that was not a good idea <laughs> I propped the book up on the handlebars and was like pedaling while while reading I was just so invested in stories and storytelling and having that foundation in literacy and loving reading and loving being immersed in stories I think inspired me to write my own so I started with writing fiction and imagining stories. And in second grade, I had a really amazing teacher who helped me discover poetry and haiku. But then as Rose mentioned, like I I have, I'm, I naturally take up a lot of activities because I have a love for everything. So I kind of lost time to, to write in my journal. And it wasn't until I started high school when I, I first found a writing workshop in DC. It's called Ritopia Lab. And I took workshops, workshops with them. And then the pandemic hit and all the workshops were virtual. And I was able to take Zoom workshops from places I normally wouldn't be able to take workshops from, like workshops in New York City or workshops in Maine. And I'm glad I didn't have to do a virtual workshop in X because that would have sucked. But I was able to have so much more time to devote to writing and work on this craft that helped me express myself, express my story, my identity, and figure out who I who I was. Do you feel like you have any particular influences, poets that you particularly have an affinity for, or other writers? So the current U.S. poet laureate Ada Lamone. Um, I had an affinity for her before she even became the poet laureate. It's actually a, a fun story because there was this contest called held by 16 Rivers Press in the Bay Area. 
and they asked teenagers to pick any poem that they felt inspired by and to write a response poem. So I was flipping through this book they sent us, an anthology of poems about America, and I found a new national anthem by Ada Lamone, and I felt like it just spoke so much to me and the country, and I felt compelled to write my own poem that kind of investigated the question, what is the national anthem? What anthems do people believe in or or have in their lives? And I wrote out a list and it's called multiple choice. And so I included like choices A, B, C, and D, even though people and anthems can go all the way through the alphabet, all the way to Z. I could actually, I can share that poem with you right now, if you'd like. That'd be great. That'd be great. But Sam, I saw Sam come on. Sam, did you see the paintings? Were you able to see the paintings earlier? Joined after they were shown. I can project again while I read. Yeah. How would that be? That'd be great. My auto, am I? There you are, Sam. We can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> the The question again was, did I see the paintings? Uh, what I just got it. I just joined the meeting, so no, I don't know how to get any of the stuff turned on. No, she there showed the paintings. There you are. No, I got here late. I'm sorry. She no, did that's in class. Okay. You suffer. No, but you <laughs> commented on her painting online, so I wanted you to. Oh, see the, the, oh. the 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 thing of the trees. I remember that yeah. beautiful harmony. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see it down there. Be that that. Yeah, I I just think that's tremendous harmony. Yeah. Showing showing the uh, Cezanne last Cezanne copy. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So, how <laughs> old are you again, Sophia? Seventeen. Oh, God. <laughs> Yes, I remember when I was 17, getting ready for the group in, in the uh, National Gallery to look at paintings. It was very difficult. Yeah, me too, getting bailed out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, read your poem. Okay, okay. I'll go to the Chateau on Lac de la Bonde. Okay. okay. Multiple choice. What is the national anthem? A, the song that binds and stitches, two sides sewn back together. The tuba players, the solo soprano, the audience that stands, hand over heart, listening. The song that sustains and softens. B, hesitating, keys in the ignition. Gas money dwindling, prices rising, smoke lingering, frost pipes rusting over. It will be a hard winter, mother size. Bundle up. You notice your bare toe peeking out from the black sock. C. Bang! Chanting, no justice, no peace. Bang! There are riots, says the news. Bang! Insurrection, Georgetown glass storefronts boarded up. Bang, Parkland nail salons, gay bars. Bang, say their names, George, Brianna, Ahmad, Tamir. Bang. D, my grandmother cooking in the kitchen today. Every day there is soup, chicken, simmering there on the stove. Here is a bowl. Take a spoonful. Potatoes, thick, warming. Onion, down the throat. Eat more. Here, there is always plenty to share. Thank you. So lovely. Are there any other poems you'd like to share, Sophia? That one is so great. Hmm. There's a bunch. If anyone, um, you can also look on our website where Sophia's featured and written there. But if there's one more, perhaps, Sophia, that you'd like to share. 
Yeah, I think I'd like to share the one that I wrote for my mom's birthday because I feel like that'd be great. It's it's kind of it's sweet. Um, that one was kind of more harsh, and I want to end on a a more positive note. And there's always more poetry. If you want to hear more poetry, you can just 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 ask me. Just ask me right now on the Zoom, or you can find me through Marshoots. Okay, and so your mom's on the call too, so perfect. <laughs> Yay! Here, which I'll project another painting. Or maybe not. Yeah. I'll just share. I'll just share my poem. It's called The Absolute. Say that the storm will soon cease and the oars we use to paddle back to shore for shelter are just our words reaching out across the abyss. Say that these words will one day become more than whispers and that speaking is not just for saying sorry. Say that all this waiting and weathering and whining wasn't for nothing. Say that you will hold me through the night. Say that I am a spoon and you will be my bowl and I will only ever hold a fraction of your sorrows. Say that when sleep creeps up the stairs like a cat with great yellow eyes, we will surrender and reach out to stroke its humble head. Listen to sleep's sweet rumbling purr. And say that when love comes barreling at us like a pothole, we will hold on to the handlebars as best we can. Say that you will let me stay and write poetry for you in exchange for a soft pillow and an empty journal. Say that you will let me stay even in the cupboard underneath the sink or the nook above the washing machine. I really am quite small. Say that I can steal clothes that you used to wear and you won't get mad. Say that we will turn our st struggles into strength and our wounds into wisdom. Say that the glow in the dark stars you pasted on the ceiling can light the glow in the dark stories that I write. Say that we are radioactive stardust decaying at a rate so fast it seems like we are standing still, silent, unable to indulge in anything but the quiet, gentle, gravitational tug between a mother and a daughter. The pole that says, there is no love softer than this. Thank you for listening. So beautiful. I have a question. Miss mm -hmm. Dear Sophia, how do you think the experience of painting last summer affected your writing? considering all these beautiful ideas that we talked about in seminar and in your work, your daily painting, talking <clears throat> about volumes and light and color. How did that affect your writing? Or do you know yet? Well, the way that you've just mentioned volumes is one way that painting changed my writing because I encountered a new unfamiliar world and I got to expand my vocabulary. I learned words that I otherwise would have been unfamiliar with and got to apply them into a story to make it feel richer, to feel it more, to make it feel more real and authentic to the place that it belongs to. And in the first piece that I shared, the luminous effect of the whole, I use so many words that I learned from Marshoots and from painting an X in it. Like, concentric circles and finding the motif and mm -hmm. rendering a painting and looking deeply into it. So that's mm -hmm. just from the words and the language aspect, my writing has evolved tremendously from Marshoots. And then I think writing and art complement each other so well because they both facilitate deep reflection into yourself and into the environment you're in and you're trying to capture whether through any medium that you wish if it's charcoal if it's just a pencil on a sketch pad if it's oil painting on canvas or if it's my words typing up on a google doc it's that skill of looking 
deeply of being able to see that's what Marshutes is all about seeing not just looking but seeing into the deeper meaning the deeper colors everything that comes together and creates the whole mm. beautiful can I quote you on that yeah really Rose has the recording. <laughs> I'm stage. taking notes too. <laughs> Me too. I'm going to type you know that I up. Sophia Hall, 2020, so 2022. Good God. Well, there's Gorgeous. so many corollaries, aren't there, between painting and writing? Yeah. You know, somebody could write a, a just an incredible essay. I'm sure people have, but um, you could. So that was a beautiful answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any other last questions for Sophia before we wrap up here? When you receive your award at Carnegie Hall, will you be reciting as well? So I don't know yet, but there's going to be a rehearsal um, beforehand and I guess I'll see then too. But I also have a lot more opportunities to perform. Um, for example, in just a little bit over a month, I'll be performing at the Kennedy Center um, wow. alongside my fellow youth poet laureates in Arlington and Montgomery County. So you can see my performance there. Wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah keep us up that, Sophia. We'll post it everywhere so you'll get lots of audience. <laughs> yeah. Ozzy, Sophia. Thank you. And don't well, forget thank you us. again. Oh, go ahead, Alan. <laughs> forget about us as you move up that ladder. <laughs> Mark has such a special place in my heart. Oh. So lovely, Sophia. Good work. So lovely. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Sophia, for sharing your poetry very, very and your powerful. paintings with us. So wonderful. And thank you to all of you for joining today. So good to see you. Yeah, it is to see these beautiful, familiar faces. My God. I know. So sweet. <laughs> okay, everybody, take care. Talk to you for the rest of your Tuesday. Elizabeth, the kiss for me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.